If you think of Stan Druckenmiller, I think he's got a sufficient amount of economic and market experience. David Einhorn. I mean, at the end of the day, you have some real-time market practitioners who are understanding the relationship, basic relationship, between the cost of living and consumption growth. Uh, at the same time, there's absolutely no policy to change what really hasn't worked. So do you think that it will take somebody in the upcoming election to appear, uh, and again, it sounds like you think they'll appear in the Republican Party or in any party that would just run on strong dollar, let interest rates rise, and just smoke the price of anything that is a commodity? Well, a couple things on this. The, the, the short answer is, yeah, I do, but I love Dave. I love Druckenmiller, Stanley Druckenmiller. I love the guy. But he's been wrong. He's been waiting for high inflation, and it hasn't happened. And I don't see any evidence of high inflation, despite the uh, mistakes of the Federal Reserve. Well, the, 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 point, like, the point that he's making, though, and I think that this... No, no, he missed I think, that. Well, no, he I think that. The part of this... All the inflationist people were wrong. I wrote a column about 18 months on it, almost two years ago, saying, you know what, there is no inflation. But part of it, again, I think part of it, Larry, is, you know, you know to, to put it frankly, is that, you know, old Wall Street, old media, old Washington, on every economic topic is a bunch of academics. So they paint everyone as either or. You either are an inflationista or you are a depressionista. You are this, you are that. There's actually nobody from a market practitioner perspective that could say, look, the last three years we've seen deflationary pressures in commodities, and guess what? Now they're reappearing. It's reflating the inflation that was at the all-time mother of highs. So I think that that provides like a, like almost like a place for everyone to just say, well, you're this and you're that, when what you really need, if you're gonna try to centrally plan anything, which I wouldn't agree with, is you actually need somebody to go, to go both ways. You're, you're entering a sort of psychoanalysis uh, argument here. I, I don't want to get into that. All, all I'm saying is the inflationists were wrong, and I find that very interesting. And if you look at the... But the, inflation, the, the inflationist being wrong is different than, and I'll pop a chart up that shows you this. Even on the Fed, and I think you'd agree on this, the government's uh, basically... Uh, misguided calculation of what is inflation, which is another discussion. But even on the CPI, which has been changed nine times since 1996, the percentage of components that are rising in the CPI are at the highest that they've been in four years. And rate of change is where the consumer feels it. So I don't, again, I, don't buy, I, I just want to say I don't buy into that. Um, attacking the index, in my opinion, misses the whole point. Well, then, I mean, if, but if you don't buy it, you'd have to say that consumption growth is at the same time slowing. Look, so you, let, me, let me disagree with you again. Consumption does not drive the economy. The economy is driven by investment and production on the supply side. We produce to consume. Now, in terms of reducing the purchasing power of the income you get from working and investing, I'm just going to argue that inflation has not been a factor. And I think if you look at markets like gold, for example, uh, which got to $1,900 an ounce several years ago. I called it the end of the world scenario. <laughs> it's trading pretty well at $1,200, $1,300 an ounce. And in fact, as Steve Forbes's book talks about, if I were rebasing the monetary system and relinking the dollar to gold, I might use a gold price that was around $1,200. And even if it's miraculous, <laughs> the Fed has the wrong approach. I don't see inflation as a problem. And right now, the break-even spreads in the TIPS market are, I don't know, barely above uh, 2%. So I, I don't think that's the issue. I, I do think the issue, however, is fiscal policy, which has gone awry. And well, I we, can, we'll, we can go back to that for a second. But first, I want to go back to that point where you said that this is not a consumption economy. So we have 70% of GDP, as you know, is consumption. 45% no, no, is I don't services. I, I don't agree with that. There's a new research coming out from academics and also from the Bureau of Labor Statistics <clears throat> that shows that that's only true for final goods and services, that the intermediate uh, stages of production show that the most important factor is business investment. And by the way, this is going to come soon in a revision of the GDP accounts. Well, this is great because every time that you know you get downward surprises, which we've had under both Bush and Obama, um, you, on downward surprises on growth, they change the calculation. So I just can't wait for that. Well, sometimes um, you make improvements. I mean, <laughs> you got a lot of smart people in academia. Yeah, well, the, actually, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, the, the, improvements. I, so I what do you make of uh, where all these? Where do you make on inflation where all these you know poor people were uh, groomed, which is MIT, 
coming up with the Billion Prices Project, which is showing a, a three-bagger on what inflation is versus the deflator that the government uses. Well, my understanding is the MIT thing is showing low inflation. It's not. I mean, it's... I mean, we could... Sh but I don't want to argue about that. And, and I don't, I don't, well, it's a chart. It's not an argument. I don't think you can make any money on that. Just look at markets. Just let but, the market guide you. Yeah, so if we look at markets, look at, look at, look at a chart of tips. Rising, the gold market would be going back to 2000. Well, year-to-date, gold's up 9%, and the Russell's down, too. So, and, and, and the Russell's a domestic consumption growth read-through. So what do you think about that? What I think is gold has been trading in a range for several years, all right? And actually, there's a whole bunch of commodities which are beginning to fall back. So be careful on that. I go to the Treasury curve. I go to the, Yeah, bond uh, yields are surprising on the downside. So The, the, the break-evens are, are going nowhere. Um, so you can Tips be, are look, making I new highs. I believe the dollar should be stronger. I do believe that, and I suspect, um, despite the Fed's uh, inaccurate, no, that's not the right word, erroneous approach, I think that what's going to happen here in the next couple of years is that monetary policy becomes less accommodative. I don't think it will be tight for a bunch of years. I don't see an inverted yield curve, but I think monetary policy will be less accommodative. And I think uh, as QE3 ends and the balance sheet stops expanding and eventually short-term interest rates will be permitted to rise, then I think you will see some downward pressures on commodity prices and some upward pressures on, uh, on uh, the dollar. I totally agree with that. In fact, that's what I loved about the economy last year. The Fed got cut. You know, the problem with the Fed is that it's, it's their forecast, so they're always behind the curve. Yankee thought unemployment would improve to 6.5% until 2017. They get caught behind the curve, rates start rising, dollars starts rising, c commodities got pounded. I mean, that's the way that the U.S. economy works. And again, you know, I'd argue that there's a lot of consumption in that. I think a lot of other people would too. I think that if we kind of lined up the ducks, you'd say that it's you know, half a dozen of one, half a dozen of the other on that.